Hello, Kimba here from Shaman College. I want to talk about the directions today the, and the calling of the directions. We have a lot of uh, videos on this on our site, I think probably many on the blog and in the introductory courses, the self-study ones, uh, Shaman College, Coming Home, uh, rituals, as well as the uh, Healing and Shamanism series. And then, of course, we go deeply into them in the foundation course, the mentored course, and even more into them as we become practitioners. And so it's, it's one of those practices similar to cleansing that often gets quickly rushed through. And, it be, and I see it a lot. Um, people kind of sometimes re just say a calling of the directions by rote, by uh, just like they're supposed to do it or have to do it or something. So I want to talk about these directions because there's a lot in them and I really want to encourage you to find your way with them. So the calling of the directions is extremely effective at opening up your consciousness to the universal interconnected web. This is the multi-dimensional, multi-time, including the dimension of time, web of, of connection. So we are all here. And we never exist in a vacuum. We are connected to all of existence. And what the calling of the directions does, it's very effective. And I've, I've worked with so many people, private clients, groups, of course, mentored students, practitioners, This, uh, and of course I've taught so many meditations, and this practice from beginners to masters <laughs> um, has a way of connecting you into this web of existence and orienting yourself as a part of this web, as an important part. So in some ways, as a really f important functioning aspect of the web, and also as one of the infinite lights on the web. Okay. So in some ways, it just allows you to know that you are here and your channels are open through the many connections. There's another thing that it does. And you see all of healing, uh, especially shamanic healing, is done through the connections right? You don't, I can't heal one, I can't work with the healing of one um, individual without 
seeing many, many, many of the lines that are directly connected to that individual. So, for instance, right now, I've been working actually with the healing with the horses because I'm here living at this moment on a uh, large horse ranch. So, and so they're teaching me as I'm also working with them. And one kind of physical injury, of course it has the, you could say, anatomy, physiology, ligaments, tendons, bones, muscles, movement, energetics, connection, right? So all of that is there. But what about the connection with the other horses, with the people in their lives, with the time? And so as I sit there with them, and I open to the directions. I am, what is revealed to me is that the right horse will come up at the right time. The right person will come up at the right time to give me a piece of information. the guidance I'm shown, who I share that with, what gets revealed. All of this is happening in a big web. So in shamanic healing, you are working on multiple levels that you're never working with the healing of one individual. That individual who may be having a challenge is tied in to a whole level of existence, including you, the one offering healing. So, the directions. There are certain prayers out there. You may know many of them. You may know a few of them in many different languages. And those prayers, when repeated often and a shared intention, they can start to um, accumulate energetics that are very effective for healing. Okay. And so there will be and there are many calling of the directions versions that other people have divined or written, have shared. And they can get like that energetic momentum and carry that wisdom of that uh, collective group. But there's something else and I would like to invite you into this and the best parallel I can have, and I'm going to try to share it with you, is that my background that goes, you know, back from when I was a child into even my 30s, 
but more intensely as a teenager and in my 20s. I was trained as a classical ballet, professional ballet dancer. And just like any fine artist, there are techniques involved, aesthetics. And when you learn choreography, you have to do it aesthetically right. You have to do it on the music to the timing that's been given in the shapes and the forms and all that. So the language, the choreography is like a language set down that you learn and, and you try to perfect. And while I enjoyed that, it didn't have a magic until the music and the movement came through this instrument. This kind of um, spirit, the soul had to be able to sing the way it does through the, uh, through the set choreography. And only then did it become authentic. Otherwise, it was just re repetition. And it was the authenticity of that part that connected me to spirit. So, when you start to call the directions, you can use um, a set prayer that somebody else has passed down. You can do that. But for me, I usually recommend that you come up with your own, not set one, but your own calling in the moment. Okay, your own calling. You can use a set, shared, written version. You can. But unless it calls to you, unless it calls to your heart, I actually recommend that you actually stand bare to the direction and let it flow from there. Okay. So, let me give you a, uh, some assistance on this. I recommend that you do a cleansing. And when you're cleansing, your intention is to just clear anything that might be in your way to these kind of directions and to the moment, you know, who knows what's happening uh, on that day when you decide to do this. But just, you know, ask and, and use that. The, the, the plant will help you. The plant helps you. So send your gratitude to the plant and then um, just anything that might be um, fogging the windows at that moment. After you've done that, I really recommend standing for this. So stand and face. You can face any direction first. I love to face the east first, so I do. Other people will face other directions, so they do. So stand, and I'm just going to use the east as a direction to begin. Stand and face the east.
ah, you can close your eyes or open them, but you want to stand there and say hello to the East. Say hello to the East. Okay? And I often imagine as far east as I can. So pa if you're inside, past the walls, past the garden, past the buildings. Go as far east with your awareness as you can. And stand there. Say hello to the east. And you can let yourself just have any dance in your imagination of what might lie in the east. So the sunrise or certain trees around you or any images. Maybe you think of spring. Maybe you think of blossoms. I sometimes think of the new little green buds on a plant or a fresh shoot. So whatever for you, uh, birds, uh, wind, air, breath, maybe a movement like you want to stretch. Just bring in maybe a song, maybe a tone, anything and everything. You just flood yourself with the connections of the East and ask the East to be here with you. And then say, tell the East, thank you. Send your gratitude to the East. And then just stand there. And you might say, then what? Then nothing. Just stand there. You just stand. True, open, and welcoming to the East. And then you rotate. And for me, I always rotate to the right. Some of our friends in um, the Southern Hemisphere like to rotate to the left. Okay? So you... You do what you feel is right. Usually, Northern Hemisphere likes to rotate to the right. Southern Hemisphere likes to rotate to the left. Following the seasonal um, directions, this is all fine. You do what you need to do. Face the next direction. For me, it would be the south. And then very similar. Very similar. You're letting yourself see what is here and you're letting yourself open to what you do not see. And you're acknowledging the relationship and then you move around like that to the west, to the north. And I always return, well, not always. <laughs> you know, I always laugh because if I say always, it'll probably be different next time. <laughs> so usually I end up facing the east again. And then it's down, I, I, I call to the Mother Earth. The Mother And you can just contemplate the earth and you can say hello and you can welcome her and you can say hello to the spot that you're actually standing on. And you might come down, you might touch the ground, you might kiss the ground, you might put your head down and you just really just uh, opening to her. Just let that happen. You've been connected to all of these directions your whole life, and you always are. And you're honoring them, and you're welcoming them. 
when you're connecting. Once in a while, as you are doing this process, something really specific will stand out. Like sometimes I might call, maybe I've gotten to the north, and I just tears just come into my eyes. And the north just says, come here, come to this, come, 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 come to this. I just know, ah, something is in an end phase, and I just kind of hang out with that energy. Maybe an image, maybe details, or maybe just a feeling, emotional feeling, sensorial feeling. Okay, and then it's to the sky. And for me, the sky is also the cosmos. It's the space. It's the stars. It's almost like everything around and beyond the earth. It's the expanse. She keeps me home and this is the flight. This is the expanse. So again, for you, it's going to be maybe very similar, maybe different, maybe different for the moment. Okay. So again, stay with that. You might reach up. I sometimes reach my arms up at that time. And then I always give a smile to local spirits, the actual close trees that maybe you can see or you know of, you feel maybe beyond the garden next to yours. Um, There may be, I just saw a few butterflies flying by. Uh, There's a dog running around. So there's some, so I kind of, uh, I, the river, I'm sitting actually next to a river. So I, get to really honor the spirits of my kind of immediate vicinity. Yeah, so we're kind of, we're like really connected even more because we're close on that web at that moment. Yeah. So welcome them, honor them. And then I do the direction of time. So these were all spatial, weren't they? So do the direction of time. I welcome all the ancestors and the helping spirits through time, my teachers, my guides. And then I go to the descendants, the time that's going to follow because this whole web, it doesn't really understand time like we do. You know, we get frustrated at time sometimes want to be in a hurry or want things to slow down. And, and um, this is just opens the whole field of time. So I welcome them. And they come to and they're here. And then I also do another direction, which is the inner direction. All of these in some way were um, our outer connections, but we have a whole inner world uh, as well. You could say uh, the cellular level, the atoms, and all the subatomics. and the, So we can go in and in, and there's universes within, universes within. And so um, going inwards, calling that direction too, a very sacred direction as well. Okay. And then after you've done that, you go to sitting. I recommend that you sit. You could stand. And you sit and you just feel, acknowledge um, what is happening at that moment. Something's happening at that moment. Usually, people feel so connected right then. It's like some people say they've tried meditation upon meditation to get to what they're sensing and feeling at that moment. It's very effective when you do it this way. I 
I just want to reiterate, it's okay to repeat, repeat um, a well-worn another person's uh, recitation of a calling of the directions, but um, I've found this. Uh, I've found this to be lacking. I really don't want to push anyone's down, so um, it may not be true, and I don't want to say it always is true at all, like I said. But um, I've been into some situations where people just kind of say some rote thing, and they want to get through that so they can get to the next part. And I think, hmm. I, I, I don't know, I didn't, I don't feel it. But there will be other times when, like I said from my example as being a dancer, there will be other times where I've observed a dancer, for instance, dancing a piece of choreography, and they're doing all the steps correctly, they're doing everything technically perfectly, so they're really doing the choreography, but it's like I'm watching a whole nother performance because they are allowing that to move through them in this authentic, soul-filled way. So it's very, it's possible. It's possible for sure. Okay, I hope that this assists you, um, whether it be you are a practitioner working with the directions a little more fully. Uh, you may also, if you're a practitioner, I, th I will really push you to work with this web in your healing sessions. Yeah. And if you're new, new or newer or returning to the calling of the directions, um, give it a try, kind of some of the ways that I've expressed here. See what happens. See what you moved to do, to say, to feel, to thank to open. Okay? All right. Thank you so much. It's been really good to sit here with you. All right. See you soon.